uh, Blake from Boston, Mass. Dennis, you know how the Occupy people, Occupy people want jobs? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, what have you seen about that? Because I don't know about the Occupy people wanting jobs. I think their job is to be unemployed, in their eyes. Do you think that their own behavior could be the reason they don't have a job? I don't think they want a job. I don't, I don't know what you look at and see that makes you think they want a job. You know, you, you, it used to be I want a job. And now they want a good job. And you get a good job by taking bad jobs. Trust me, I've had every crap job. Eric nodding his head. How many bad jobs did you have before you got the good job? <laughs> At least ten. I drove a flour truck. I remember it was an ice cream scoop with a college degree. A uh, night janitor at a mall. Remember when I first moved to New York, I used to do these orders for a guy who made, uh, it was a tie and tool and die shop. And they made little screws, nuts, and washers. And he used to sit there. I was trying to be a comedian. I used to have these funny moments during my day when I was making a living where I'd be, just like a pharmacist, you'd have that plastic tray and these little manila envelopes that were just tiny. And somebody in Buffalo would order five washers, five nuts, and five wing nuts, and I'd have to take this metal thing that was like a letter opener and scoop them into the envelope, seal it, write the address on this little envelope, put it into a bigger envelope, zip that up, and send it out to them and keep tabs in a ledger book. I said, I don't think I'm near show business at this point. <laughs> so I've had the bad jobs, and they lead you to the good jobs. These kids want to start at the good jobs. And quite frankly, truth be told, Many of them would never fess up to this. If they could start at the top of the Wall Street chain, many of them, they'd be there in a shot. They just don't want to earn their way up. It's like Obama, you know. It's like you get to be rich without any of that messy earning that goes on. Like, it always kills me when he makes, uh, you know, he, he decries wealthy people. Quite frankly, he's lived a wealthy man's life. He's been in the bubble since he was, you know, a young man. All at our expense. That's the only thing. None of that messy earning involved. He just went, you know, he was always on somebody else's diet. I think that's what these kids emulating their hero would like to do. I was just thinking that when an Occupy person has an arrest for failure to disperse on their record, all right, that certainly would tell a prospective employer that they don't follow directions too well. Yeah, I think... Uh, I think, if, yeah, I would say that if you saw somebody, but how are they? You know, listen, we've all had indiscretions when we were a kid. Uh, and, you know, when I was a kid, it used to be somebody who would put a bing cherry up their ass and waddle across the floor at a frat house and drop it into a martini glass to get a paddle. Nowadays, it's Occupy Wall Street, but it's the same core premise. A cherry up your ass. <laughs> but uh, let's, let's just say they're young, and young people are often... Uh, bright but not wise and let's leave it at that and hopefully they'll move on I'm sure many most of the kids at the Occupy Wall Street one day will laugh at the irony of them looking at whatever the permutation of that is 50 years hence and grousing at home because I certainly know I would have probably been at an Occupy Wall Street thing when I was 18 and now at 58 40 years later as I watched it last month I remember thinking these punk kids I think you sound like Archie Bunker I assume most of them will have that same uh, moment of bemusement and introspection when they eventually cited four decades hence. Enjoy these samples of the bathroom sessions, a weekly video available only to members of the DMZ, the Dennis Miller Zone on DennisMillerRadio.com. <laughs>